Um, yeah. All right. So, ladies and gentlemen, Mark Price and Brad Watson. <laughs> Whose seat is this? Who's this one? That, that seat. Is, is that for you? If you um, decide during the course of this <laughs> afternoon to bring someone up, to bring someone with you, that's something <laughs> for them to sit on. Well, Sarah's here, isn't she? Just bring Sarah. Sarah, 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 because you're in it. Sarah, you have, you have to sit, you know, it's too late. The, it's the embarrassing Brad. <laughs> the star of the film, everyone. <laughs> I mean, I have to sit in that one. I've made, I've made notes, because I'm the worst at uh, remembering what to talk about. Um, Haddonfield Estate, huh? <laughs> oh, okay. Wait, so how is the state in the Haddonfield constituency? Oh, okay, I got it. Does anyone get that reference? Yes. Yeah. Nice, there you go. You Please. are the cool people in the Haddonfield movie. Haddonfield is said about seven or eight times in the movie. <laughs> For those of you who don't know, Haddonfield is the uh, town from Halloween. Yeah. So we should introduce Sarah properly. Sarah, as you may recognise, was the star of the film. Oh. <laughs> and how did you guys meet? Oh, here. In this room. It was because really? of you. Oh, because it was because oh, of, of me. <laughs> yeah. Basically, we, get, uh, we came to a screening of, of, of one of Mark's films, and we, yeah, I was sitting out in the bar, as I normally do, on my own, having a beer, <laughs> and, um, and uh, this vision came floating to me, and <laughs> sat down, and in, instead of thinking, wow, what a beautiful woman just sat down and started talking to me, I went, Cassie just sat down next to me. And uh, I was writing the script at the time, and, uh, I didn't know this. Yeah, of course you didn't know. It must have been what a year later. Easily, a year yeah. or so. Yeah. Yeah. So little did she know that. So, so this is a great tip for anyone. Um, just say hello to people Absolutely. and talk to people. <laughs> it's true. Because Especially you Brad. <laughs> no, no, but you just don't know what's going on and what people are cooking up and what projects are going on. So Sarah said hello to me and, and she stuck in my mind. Now that doesn't mean that she automatically got the part. Obviously, we we. Um, I did audition her and I auditioned a lot of other people for the part because, you know, this is the lead part in my movie. I'm not going to just uh, uh, give it to someone because they said hi. But it's just that when you said, when you... I wish it was that easy. But, but the important thing is, and this is, this is very important for people to understand, is, and Mark agrees with this, I think, 100%, is we there's there's lots of great actors out there lots of really good actors out there that, that can that can give you everything you need for your role and and give their own unique spin on it but we love to work with people that we know we're going to get on with and we know we're going to fit in with our way of working because uh your way of working is very especially when you're making a low budget movie um there's no room for it you, you've got no contingency you know, everyone's got to be on their game. Everyone's got to be working, and everyone's got to fit into the way you're 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 shooting. Um, so, personality of people you're working with is very very important. So that's why um, not only did Sarah, you know, fit the part for me because when I was writing it, I I I knew that I wanted the brother and sister characters. I hadn't I don't think I'd given them names yet, but I knew I I wanted them to be different race. I wanted one to be mixed race and one to be Caucasian, and that and I didn't know which was which. Um, so I kind of lean towards the way it turned out after meeting Sarah, had her in my mind, but after we auditioned, and we auditioned a lot, we did a, mm, quite a few. Absolutely. Um, and, uh, and yeah, gave her the part, obviously. Right, Yay. good choice. <laughs> but um, it's his fault. Yeah. Anyone needs any work. <laughs> um, so, uh, yeah, we're going to talk about the uh, sort of development of the film, really, and, and script. How you got that uh, written? Did you was that on spec and, and budget? Where did you find the budget to make the film? <laughs> if that's a cool conversation to have, knowing that you um, need to get it distributed. Yes, I wrote it on spec. I wrote it completely. Um, uh, my last movie came out six years ago. Is that Beacon? Yeah, okay. Beacon. Who uh, and there's some people who worked on that here. My DP's here who worked on that, and my oh, camera operator. Um, and. Um, uh, when a movie comes out and it gets released, it Beacon went into about 20 countries, and it's like, yay, doing really well, Brad. Yeah, let's go, let's go. Um, right, these are my other projects here, 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 here. And then they just, you know, they just meander, and they enter the system of the British film industry, and um, and you start finding yourself relying on other people too much, people that don't deliver, blah, blah, blah. That is sound like I'm bitter. I'm not. This is just, this is just, this is just, you know. How you then? How how I came to the decision to make the movie? Um, I'd had this sort of concept 
of which I can talk about. Clearly, we done. I've done all these interviews, but I'm not allowed. Well, I'm trying not to give away what the concept is, but I can now because you've all seen it. Um, <laughs> I had the concept of of a of a of a vigilante movie that's uh, that's from the point of view of the people being attacked and doing it as a horror film. <clears throat> I had that a long, long time ago, um, um, and it was a, an idea that stuck with me. So when I was like, right, okay, let's. Let's figure out something that we that I can get going myself, and that was the concept that came to the forefront of my mind. And I said, okay, let's sit down and write it. And you, know, you sit there, go to coffee shops, and you sit there, and you're like, you know, page one, page one, page one. And then, and then you write in coffee shops. Uh, well, the only reason, the only reason, the type, right? No, 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 no. no. No, no, I'm going to defend myself I'm doing here. Important. I'm going to important! You're just drinking coffee! I'm going to defend myself here. The only reason I write in coffee shops is because I have to stay away from the internet. I make sure I don't know where... I make sure I don't know what their, their uh, thing is. Because it's a distraction. It's because it's harder to procrastinate in a coffee shop than in your living room. Procrastinate. You're all very familiar with that too. This is, this is for youngsters, right? Anyway, don't worry, I'm going to get to you. Anyway. I'll explain what that is. No, 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 no. So, every writer here knows what we're talking about. Yes. So, um, but it wasn't until suddenly the, the, the idea of filtering it through a John Carpenter 80s style, when that kind of clicked, I was like, right, I think I can do this now. And then I, I sat and I wrote it. And then obviously you've written it, and I've got this script, and I'm like, okay, well, what do I do? I, I need to get it done. So I went to my sales agents that, did, that sold my last movie, who for some insane reason really liked working with me. So I, I said to them, I've got this idea, and I think we can do a, a section of this movie um, off our own backs. Now I wrote it with that in mind. I wrote it with the second half of the movie all taking place in this abandoned factory. Um, because those of you that, that know filmmaking will know that doesn't matter how uh, how simple you make a scene. If you can do exterior night, forget it. You you need money to do that. You, you you're going to be in a world of pain if you don't have a little bit of money to do exterior night stuff, especially in a public place in you know, a estate and that. So so I, I said right. Well, the second half of the movie is all going to be not exterior night. It's all going to be interior somewhere, um, purely for that purely for that reason. So so then I focused on the second half of the script. So basically, the movie you just saw. Um, all the stuff that is in the corridors, in the factory, in the abandoned factory, was shot nearly two years ago, a year and a half ago, yeah? Easy, yeah. Shot totally off our own backs. Um, I got in touch with a, a DP who lives not far from me called uh, Robert Horrell, who, who co-produced it with me because he invested, but he, had, he runs his own uh, uh, hire facility. He's got red, uh, he's got Alexas, he's got red dragons and, and, and everything. Um, and I approached him with the idea and I said, look, let, if we can get a bit of this going and then try and raise the money to finish it. And he, he That was the thing, wasn't it? Because there's a shot in there of Sarah uh, shot about a year and a half ago. <laughs> and then it's the bit where that, that really great bit where the guy's like, is this yeah. still a test? <laughs> and, um, and then, but the bit of him getting hit was done a year later and you digitally yeah. Yeah, I think I, I think we're gonna we're gonna show that in one of the clips. Cool. But yeah, that's ab absolutely. And there, there's, so there's that happening all the time. We're into cutting between stuff we shot a year and a half ago and stuff we, <coughs> stuff we shot seven months ago. So the stuff you did a year and a half ago was that to raise money for yes. the film. Mm. I knew the answer. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Elaborate. <laughs> Prompt me. Um, uh, yeah. So we. So basically, we. Um, so I. I put out a casting call. Uh, got some fantastic, so there's a lot of cast here who came on board, except for one, and I'll go into that in a sec. <laughs> what? What's this? What's this? Is this gossip? You know how much I love gossip? Yeah, yeah, we had to do a recast, but, but we, 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 we were also glad that, that Ethan came on board and did it. But, we, but basically we shot um, that, that second, most of that second half of the movie off our own backs a year and a half ago. Um, with all these guys that, that came on board and got Ruby, we've got we've got Matt, we've got so many people here, Frankie, um, who who um, believed in the project, believed in me when I sold them the, the idea um, uh, that that okay we're gonna we're gonna do this for no money, bam, mm -hmm. and then I'm gonna go out and try and raise just enough money for us to finish the film off properly, um, and um, yeah, lo and behold, it worked. 
<laughs> well, uh, we're going to talk now about uh, references and stuff because, yeah. just because it was kind of fun. There was loads of stuff I saw in it. Brad sent me a version of the film. I think it was a rough edit, mm. and I think I, I immediately started going like, ah, it's close encounters. <laughs> just the close yes. encounters bit. Yeah. Um, so there was loads of references. Again, there's stuff, more stuff we spotted today. Yep. There's a howling reference in there. Um, yeah, well, it's more. It's more. Which Joe Dante. You just told reference. me about. Like, pretended there's, there's I pretended. There's always every single every single movie I make will have a Joe Dante reference in it. This has got a couple. Um, uh, there's the when the gang are, are chatting, they talk about uh, who who's causing all the problems, and one of, and a name that's thrown out is Eddie Quist. Eddie Quist is Robert Picardo's character in The Howling, and um, and the, the MP's name is Richard Miller, i.e. Dick Miller, Dick who's in every single Joe Dante movie. Yeah. Joe Dante is the director of Gremlins. Um, and Inner Space and Explorers and so many of my favourite movies. He's probably my favourite director of all time. Kind of how we bonded, yeah. right? Yeah, we just... absolutely, yeah. Well, yeah. I, I, funny enough, I'm jumping ahead a bit here, but I kind of felt that the whole soundtrack had a sort of Jerry Goldsmith, Poltergeist 2 sort of vibe to it. <laughs> Specifically yes. Poltergeist 2. Was that yes. on purpose or am I just reading too much into it? Um, it's No, you're not. Well, you. I did reference, I was just chatting to Tom over there about the references for the music because, yeah, I, I did the music and that was purely... Uh, it was mainly to save you did, money. You did the music? Yes. You wrote that score? Yes. You didn't tell me no, that? No, no, no. Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> I might have some work for you. <laughs> Three, of course. Of course. Of course. Oh, no. It's, it's a great opportunity. You could work with us again, you know, another project. <laughs> great for your show, really. Good for your show, really. <laughs> um, Okay, let's sound. Um, <laughs> I didn't know, that. that's wicked. Did you not know? No, you never oh, mentioned okay, it. Okay, didn't I? Okay. Are you credited? Oh, you know, been, yeah. I just hit that, like, yeah. two pieces. You see, what happens is every time I've seen the film, I text him and go, like, I just got a Jay and Silent Bob reference, and the kid goes like that to the other kid. I was, yeah. So that's what I've been doing, so I missed, I missed your credit. <laughs> well, read credits. <laughs> yes. I, I, okay, the, the way the music came out was mainly to, to save money, but, um, but also, I wasn't going to, like, do it if I didn't think that I could do it. So, I, and the thing is, when we when 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 we, we wrote when we did the first part, and then I went out with my sales agent, Movie House, who who supported me from the beginning. So so I went to them with this harebrained scheme, and they said, look, if you do this and you you get the money and you make it, you know, or if you do this, you can tell people that you're trying to get the money from that we're going to take it out to the market and sell it. So you have a sales agent attached, and that's a very very important thing um, because that that means that I'm not some schmo who's going, oh, I want to make a movie. That, that just puts you into a, into a, <laughs> onto a level of industry confidence where um, a sales agent is saying, we're going to go, we're going to take you to out to sale. We're going to give you sales estimates for the, for the financiers and all that stuff. Now that will sound, might sound to those of you that are just starting off, that might sound like, oh, how, how does that happen? But that, it's just pure relationships. It's just, the number one thing you have to remember is, is you need to, it takes time and you, and you need to, gain people's trust. Movie House sold my last movie. They were very impressed with what we did for the money. They were, they liked the business it did for them. And uh, they liked, um, and they liked me. And they liked what I was trying to do and they liked other projects of mine. So it's purely that. So they said, yep, we'll help you with this. So um, to have them on board uh, was, was fantastic and gave it, gave it the confidence. Well, on the subject of some of the films that we that, that influenced you and films that I love, that how we sort of got to know each other. We do have some clips. Mm -hmm. um, now, you made these clips. Yes. So uh, the first one is going to be of what exactly? We got Raiders of the Lost Ark. No, we'll see. No, no, no. The, the, first, no, no. the first clips are, well, just play them. We'll, we'll, we'll play see. Them. You, you know see, what the file is called? It's, it's, the it's called Clip. It's called Clip One. Oh, that, that. <laughs> that original name. Okay, here we go. I'm intrigued. Anything you want, I'll do. So, I won't be back till midnight. Statements like is there now? No. I, I don't know where he is. He's not answering his phone. <laughs> Anyone messes with me and the whole camp goes. Anyone messes with me and the whole place goes. Yeah. 
Anyway, those are four clips that I, I thought I'd throw together you just to show object that, that, I, that, so I abs- that I have, do not have an original bone in my body. <laughs> but I really wanted Sarah to say, okay, so when we, when we did the, uh, that final scene uh, that Sarah is so amazing in, and, and, and I, what was it, I said, I'm going to shoot the shit out of you in the scene. That, that was yeah. the actual um, words you we, said, yes. Um, I said to her, right, there's this line of dialogue that you're going to say, um, anyone messes with me and the whole place goes. And I'm going to say, I know you're going to come up to me and say, uh, can I reword this? I, I preempted her and I said, no, <laughs> you can't. Because it's what a direct. I didn't give, get a chance to even think about it. I, I got in there before. Like, I know, I, 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 I knew. Was, I have this vision of you looking at the model like, yeah. Brad, can I reword? No. Because yeah. <laughs> <laughs> really no, there was that an concept. intentional John Carpenter reference. <laughs> she says that because there she is with a flame at the thing, I mean, the thing, Kurt Russell, the thing being one of the greatest films ever made. If any of you have not seen the thing, see it. Um, uh, and yeah, so, so those references are all deliberate and it's all, and obviously the thing's called Hallow's Eve. It's obviously, you know, and I've never been shy about saying, look, this is a homage to John Carpenter, it's a homage to the, that era of horror movies. And um, uh, so I thought, well, I might as well do some blatant references or rip-offs, depends on how you look at it. <laughs> I was going to say, was it tricky finding pumpkins out of season? Because we were shooting films at the same, <laughs> the same time, right? So on in January, you okay. were this. I said, what, I, what I season? Said, what season is the season? Sarah, for Sarah, t- I sent a text to you the other day. What did it say? What did it say? Don't you? Yeah. <laughs> you can read it unopened. I was going to show text. You, you replied to it. Okay, I sent a text to Sarah the other day saying, I'm in a supermarket and I have to stop myself. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, I remember the text. Yes. <laughs> I sent a text to Sarah saying, okay, I'm in a supermarket now and I have to stop myself from buying up all the pumpkins. Because for the last two years, true, all true. I've done is buy pumpkins at this time of year. Because, um, because two years ago, we were, about, we were going to shoot mm. in December. So I'm like, I need to buy all the pumpkins now. <laughs> So I did that, and then and then and then uh, and then we were yeah, shooting again. this January. Yeah. So the October before that, I need to buy all the pumpkins now. So do yeah. you have like a big freezer like in Texas Chainsaw Massacre <laughs> around the woman? Funny enough, I did. Pumpkins. I did some research, and as long as I didn't cut into the pumpkins, I they would they would keep. That was oh, the thing on yes. set. That just don't cut them. Don't cut them because as soon as you cut them, because they're so old, as soon as you cut them, they will rot like literally like time lapse. Like, there was <laughs> like what's like in uh, Indiana Jones and the King of the Crystal <laughs> yeah. Skull, yeah. that one. Uh, <laughs> Wait, that's they, the they, do, they, do, they do a thing and then the body falls apart and oh. I don't really remember. But pretty much one pumpkin <laughs> you know what that I mean? we had to use for continuity was like that by the end. But we were like, we've got to use the same one and it was so mangled. And I think it's probably yeah. one that I had to kick. Yeah, yeah, no. And we'd like piece it back together again for the like, take. Okay, this is really cool. Are we allowed to talk about the things that I was like, yeah, instead of kicking over what you should have done, it's got the cardboard. Oh, no, 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 we can, we can talk about all this stuff. Oh, my God. <laughs> And the other oh, one is Thumper, Mayor Love Burn Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the burning bit. Well, that was it. There's a line they haven't recorded yet where basically she, the guy's like, Why are you burning my skin? And he goes, Do the other side. And she's like, No, that's cool. This <laughs> <laughs> is nice. It feels nice. Yeah. <laughs> but, okay, but um, I need to say that. Because I'm very that, lazy. I know how to move shit using my feet. <laughs> All the controls. That, that whole scene. Like a chimp. That whole scene. <laughs> Um, of uh, where Sarah wakes up and uh, it is tired and all that stuff. That entire scene, um, how long did it take us to shoot that scene? Oh my goodness. Like literally, it took us over a year because yeah. we shot. <laughs> we shot. Well, it started in 2014 and yeah. ended in 2016. Absolutely, yeah. I swear. Yeah, yeah. totally. Years. I thought you were going to say an hour. So there, <laughs> there, are, there, are sh- there are shots of Sarah where it intercuts with it's a shot of Sarah and then it cuts back to the guys in the mask, cuts back to her, it's a year later, the shot of her. It's, that's, that's how we did it. And that, and that is actually, the credit I have to give there is to my, my makeup uh, supervisor. And, and Sarah's aging process, supervisor. which you know, to be fair is fairly fact, slow, like Sarah's, a Highlander. Sarah's an angel. Um, uh, the film this, not Scottish people. This is, something, this is something that you have to think about. If you're going to make a low budget movie, or if you're going to make a movie like this, um, you, are, you are not going to make your schedule no matter how hard you try. So you have to be aware of that and you have to think about what you drop and things you drop are things that you know you can easily pick up when it's just you and your DP and your actress mm-hmm. and, and no one else. So there's a lot of shots there that are literally just us doing these close-ups and things like that a year after we've shot the Masters. 
Well, one of my favorite ones is that you said uh, the street lights go coming on. Yeah. Like you basically live on that road, so <laughs> yeah. every night you would st sit outside and you'd get something. Oh, that's cool. Then you get another angle the next night, and the next night for about maybe three three weeks. Yeah. You go. Oh yeah, I'll, I'll get some shots of the the lights coming mm -hmm. on. Might, yeah, the lights they go, go a long way. It's like a production value yeah. in a mm -hmm. weird way. Because I, like, I have I had I, I have a red one camera. So which and it's an old red one. It's not. Updated, it's not MX. It's a really old one. I wouldn't, you know, hire, if I hire, try to hide it, people would, like they, they'd laugh. But it, but the, what people don't realise is the technology is basically the same and it's never changed. It's just about uh, the amount of light it can it can um, respond to. And um, so I knew that I could I could run out into my street when they turn the lights off at midnight in my town and just grab all these pickups. So yeah, there's a, there's a there's a few shots that are just me sort of in my dressing gown standing in someone else's house with the lights. See now, well, this this is a very vague thing I wrote down here. It's yeah. called the shoot set stories problems you overcame. Go. <laughs> well, <laughs> I went on holiday for two weeks and got a tan. Yes. <laughs> That's pretty hard when you're filming over two years. Well, yeah, there was lots of flickering that. yellow light. Well, there was right. lots of makeup. They had to darken me because I knew I was going to go on, on holiday. So when I came back off holiday, I'd be it would <laughs> continue to be there. Well, so they started with. I filmed yeah. the day before I went on holiday, and we were st continued picked up filming the day after I got back after two weeks in Mexico. Mm. Um, but the so thing is, because is because plan. yeah, because Sarah's a pro. She 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 said. Um, because uh, we we were going to shoot it all in the January, yeah. but then there was a scheduling problem, blah blah, blah and and we ended up saying right, well I'm going to have to shoot two days with Sarah at the location um, in, December. in December to bring it forward two days, and Sarah said, well I'm going to go on hol I'm going to be on holiday in in between those those periods, and which I went it's fine, and she went no no I will look totally different when I get back, <laughs> so so in those two days that we shot with her before she went around on holiday, we, yeah we had to tan her up. Even not, not, not professional enough to stay in yeah. the shade. Huh? No, so I, I love my work, but I also love the sunshine. <laughs> two weeks in Mexico, come on. <laughs> A movie, <laughs> but uh, but that but because Sarah's a pro, she knows that that's something that she needs to make us aware of, and it's it little things like that come out of the woodwork that you mm. you just not planned for. But if everyone's on their game and everyone knows things, they'll bring them up and they'll they'll make them known, and then your professional makeup crew will will go okay, don't worry, we'll deal with that, and and it's fine. So so cool. I do nothing; I just rely on everyone else being <laughs> professional. Yeah, yeah. It's, okay. yeah. it's good. <laughs> Hang on, sorry. So, I'm sorry. I didn't expect you to wrap that up so quick. Good oh, Jesus questions. Okay, post production. I've, I've got okay. new clips. What was the Raiders? Clip? Okay, all right. Well, okay, the Raiders clip was. That's a production one, right? Yeah, that's a production one. And this is where. Okay, I was asked to, you know, when I was asked to do this Q and A, to uh, come up with some ideas about about filmmaking ideas and filmmaking concepts that work with a low budget. Now, and one of the, and, the, and I know just, uh, Mark agrees 100 percent with me with this. We. Um, if there's a, if there's one man who's one of the greatest low budget filmmakers of all time, it's Steven Spielberg, and he shoots things in a way that if you shoot it in a, on a low budget, you can you can do this stuff, and it's and it's got a magic to it as well. Um, and the clip I'm going to show is it's a clip from Raiders of the Lost Ark. Um, that when I was a kid, I'd seen Ra Raiders so many times. It's one of my favourite films. But then when I just got to a certain age. Where I started to notice things. When I noticed that this whole thing was one shot, um, just with one cutaway, it blew my mind. It basically, it, it blew my mind. I was like suddenly, wow. And um, it, I, the, 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 the scene just worked so well. So Before we show it, we, yeah. should, we should talk about like the technique employed. Basically, some of those little schedules kicking your ass. You <laughs> haven't got time to shoot. Sometimes you want to shoot, uh, some filmmakers like to shoot a lot of options. Um, you, you know, when the shed is kicking your ass, the best thing you can do is just design a really interesting shot and then get yourself an out. So if the beginning of one take is better than the end of that take and then the end of another take is amazing but the beginning isn't so hot, you can sort of throw a cutaway yeah, in there and then, and then you can use both. And, and there's, one, there's one cutaway in this, in this, in this shot yeah. right at the end and it's a great cutaway that works and, and you can bet it's because he missed... But you know what? I, actually think, I think as well. Sometimes when you use those cutaways, they they maximise impact because the max the, the moment yeah. is yeah. oh shit oh, no, no, he's going it, on no exactly That's, it works you know, it works brilliantly but it exactly. works on, on multiple levels and and the idea is hopefully people in TV land don't know yes that that's <laughs> what you <laughs> <laughs> you don't know whether it's a technical yes. thing or so let's, it's let's a really cool shit it's really interesting yeah. oh. <laughs> <laughs>
did it, didn't you? They want you to go for it. Oh, Marcus! They want you to get a hold of the Ark before the Nazis do, and they're prepared to pay handsomely for it. And the museum? The museum gets the Ark when we're finished. Oh, yes. Oh. The Ark of the Covenant. Nothing else has come close. That thing represents everything we got into archaeology for in the first place. Mm. You know, five years ago, I would have gone after it myself. I'm really rather envious. Got to locate Abner. I think I know where to start. So she'll still be with him? Possibly. Marion's the least of your worries right now, believe me. What do you mean? Well, I mean that for nearly 3,000 years, man has been searching for the lost ark. Not something to be taken lightly. No one knows its secrets. It's like nothing you've ever gone after before. <laughs> oh, Marcus, what are you trying to do? Scare me? You sound like my mother. We've known each other for a long time. I don't believe in magic, a lot of superstitious hocus-pocus. Going after a find of incredible historical significance, you're talking about the boogeyman. Besides, you know what a cautious fellow I am. Okay, so it's right. a wicked map painting. Oh, that's a great map painting. But um, okay, but that so that's that's just one master shot doing that whole scene in in round two shot, two shot, two shot, two shot. Oh, then then he yeah, then he starts talking about the arc. So we push in, single, and then Harrison Ford comes walking across, two shot, and then bam 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 bam, and then the cutaway, bam, and then off we yeah. go. And it I can't tell you how much I get off on that kind of filmmaking. <laughs> it's absolutely That's why he has to write in coffee shops. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, but but the, the important thing to remember, the important thing to remember that is, you, is you can't do a scene like that. You can't do a scene like that unless you've got a great script great actors that, that are, you know, I mean, you've got two of the greatest actors ever there, and uh, that know what they're doing, that can make it natural, hit their mark. I mean, these guys are hitting marks that are within a millimeters, and they're making it feel natural, and you've got great camera operator, great DP, and a great focus puller, and a great grip. And unless you have all those elements, you can't do a shot like that, but you can think in those ways. You can think in those ways and you can make a whole, and as long as you've got that little cutaway when we cut to the gun, bam, and bam. But it works so well for that scene because it's, it's mysterious, 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 gun, whap, off we go, matte painting, it's, oh, it's, the, it's the energy, isn't it, of, the, yes. of, the whole, the, yeah. of, of keeping the momentum of the story going. Yeah. So that's like an exposition dump yeah, scene. Yeah, absolutely. Like, it's set yeah. by Marion. Yeah, and, and you would, and if you were, if you were, if you, I'm going to say, if you were a lesser filmmaker, you would cut that up. You would, you would be scared about shooting a scene like that in that way. That, that is something I see in a, in a, f a few films that I make. I'm, I'm, I, we get to see other filmmakers make stuff because we're, you know, we're friends with filmmakers. And there's sometimes a, a real lack of confidence in shooting stuff where we, you know, I've, I've made suggestions to filmmakers and said, look, I haven't got any time to shoot the crap out of this to take it to the editing room. So just make a decision and it'll be fine. Get a couple of insert shots where you can break those things up. And they do it. And then they spend another hour getting lots of different angles. Yeah. It's kind of like, you, you know. Now, now there's a there's, so there's a shot in Hallow's Eve, and I think Matt and and Ethan are going to remember this, um, uh, where we had a two-page dialogue scene that we had to shoot um, at sunset, and the sun was going, and we were we were up against it. Uh, the sun was going down. We literally had ten minutes of the sun left, and we had a two-page dialogue scene to shoot, um, and we had two kids in the, in in the scene as well. Now. What you often do as a filmmaker when you've got two youngsters, especially when you don't have a lot of time, is you will shoot that scene up so that you can go in with the edit and you can help out their performances with the edit. Um, we didn't have time. So basically I turned to Bob, a DP, and I said, right, I'm going to shoot this all in a master and we're going to use this um, uh, pylon and we're going to track. So it's the scene right at the beginning after they all jumped over the wall and all that stuff and then suddenly it cuts to them walking along Ethan says, you know, well, you should still do in here, and blah, 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 and it all goes on, you know, and, um, you know, the, 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 the legendary line, um, suck my sweaty sacks, um, <laughs> and, and all that stuff, and, but it's all, but if you watch the movie, it's all one, it's one amazing, um, uh, it's, it's done on a Ronin, and it's tracking along the side. Now, to pull that, something like that together in 10 minutes 
He's like, like, literally, we did a rehearsal that was all wrong. And I literally then run up to him and I said, right, wait there on that line, hold there. On that line, get to here, blah, 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 blah. I said, I went to uh, Roy, the Roy who plays the guy, with, uh, you know, the, oi, what are you doing here, guy? Um, I said, right, Roy, wait all the way down there. We might get to you. I don't know. Let's see. But if you see me going like that behind the camera, that means come out and say your line. Um, so we did this rehearsal. It was complete balls up. But... I, but, but the thing is, is that once you know where things, where the time is not hitting, you can run up to great actors like Ethan and Matt and say, okay guys, when you pull out the money, do it here. When you do that there, just stop there for a second, blah, blah. And then that will mean that, that by the time Roy comes out, you should be there. <sighs> Roll it, we've got, and Bob's going, this is, we've got one, one shot of this, the sun's gonna be gone. Roll it, happened, started happening. I'm looking at it, Bob's operating, and he, goes, and he just looks at me like that. And I'm like, <laughs> It's working, isn't it? Like, so like that, comes out to this beautiful shot, and then I'm going to Roy. And then Roy comes out, blah, 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 like that, and it was great, and I was like, we did it! And, it was, and so, that's sometimes, you know, and that's a shot that, if people look at it, it looks like it was probably a, you know, a preconceived choreographed shot, but no, it was literally like, this is all we've got time to do. We were shooting films at the same time in, yeah. in January, right? So I was sending you like the same type of shots, like, look what I just did today. You're like, look what I just did today. And it was, it was one of those rare things, I think, as filmmakers, you know, there's, there's, there's some, there's some kind of competing shit that goes over the top. Yeah, which is nuts. Which we, is nuts. we don't have. We, no. we, we, I, I would send no. you stuff and, and you'd send me tests saying, oh, dude, I wish I had a controllable set. <laughs> where it would be nice, like, put the yeah. lights wherever I want. I mean, dude, I wish I could shoot outside with modern clothes. <laughs> <laughs> that would be so much fun. And, uh, <laughs> it was just, I don't know, but I, you sent me that. And it's just a very efficient way to shoot when the schedule is very, very tr tricky, I think. Absolutely, yeah. But but you look at the stuff that we pulled off, and I think it's I think it's because we think in those well, You ways, pulled off, I got fired yeah, off mine. Yeah, <laughs> I've seen the rough cut. It's amazing, um, but the, but the, but we think we think in those ways. We we always think yeah. in those ways, and we always think about okay, how do we make no shot is a we don't cover things just because we're you know you're covering it just for sake. I mean, you'll do maybe a little insert, just like okay, if I do need it, I've got that. But but you don't go right. Okay, let's do the close up there. Let's do the close up there. Let's do a two shot. Right. Okay, I'm kind of getting. No, we think in in terms of shots creating things and shots developing into things shots making stuff and and that's why i wanted to show that that razor shot because um it's not you know there, there are so many more you know ballsy one take shots out there you know zemeckis does them a lot um uh, but there's just something about the way spielberg does things like that that just feels you don't even notice that it's a one shot you don't even know the same thing i was talking to like tim who's in the front row there because of another filmmaker and we were talking about like uh well, tim said he said the 80s was like that golden era of uh, competent master shots yes. where the camera moved and it wasn't just wide yes. and, and the block is even in like you know really crappy low budget like yes. nonsense terrible terrible films the, the directing was present and it, things have shifted now where everything's more a case of oh, like yeah. grabbing stuff what's that thing that Herzog said in that Facebook thing that keeps popping up but we're not garbage collectors we we're should, we're, we're we should be selecting we're thieves our, yeah. we're thieves we get away with loot we should be choosing yeah. like the right shots yeah. to tell the story Absolutely. and not randomly Absolutely. grabbing and that's why movies now I, I don't I don't when the big movies come out now, I'm, you know, I don't get that excited about who's directing them because, because I know that they're not going to direct them. I know they're just going to shoot the shit out of them and cut them together, and 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 other people are going to help them do help them do that. Um, and that's why most big budget movies now, um, they just yeah they're you know spectacular. There's some great stuff, but you don't feel a, a director's hand. Doing so you think that that's because we're old now? Like we, we, we watch stuff old. like we watch stuff like The Explorers, and we're like, it was the greatest movie ever. But like my dad was like, eh. yeah. <laughs> so like maybe we're at that point in life. We gotta accept this now. Like you the know. one time, the one time I knew I had the coolest dad in the world was because he loved Goonies as much as me. Because all, all the other adults thought Goonies was just a, an in, a mess. They're like, I can't understand what the kids are saying. But my dad loved it. So. <laughs> I remember my mum. Uh, my my mum would say, "You're not allowed to watch Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom because is, the son said some shit about it." And my dad was like, oh, "Fuck that! Let's just watch it." <laughs> Put it on, and he said, "Don't tell your mum we watched this." Shoot, she came on. Dad, oh, I'm on TV. I'm on TV. Started doing all the lines from Indiana Jones, and she went, "You watched that snake eating film, didn't you?" And I was like, "It was <laughs> great." And my dad was just like, "Oh Jesus Christ, the kids!" <laughs> so yeah. But what? The okay, but, but the thing is, is that okay? So we're talking about techniques here, and we're talking about. Um, uh, techniques that work on a lower budget and stuff like that. We should talk but, about visual effects because yeah. that's a huge part of it. Well, right? well, the next clip is just going to juxtapose um, a one-shot thing I did 
with with uh, with a, a scene like shot shit at you with, <laughs> when you wake up. Um, and I just want to. Um, so this is uh, this is. I think it's clip three. Hopefully, um, if you just show these <laughs> clip three, it, there should be two moments that I'll then chat about. Okay. Cool. Thank you. Is this it? Yeah. There's no side of this. You have to so, talk to yeah, yeah. So this is one shot, one shot. And the reason is because I wanted this scare, this shock to happen in, in, in one shot. Because um, I just thought it would be more effective if we didn't cut, bam, and then that happens. And I don't, I don't know, you might all sit there and just laugh. But, <laughs> but, um, but I don't know. So then we, have, then we have this sequence. Now, if you watch this sequence, we pretty much don't cut back to the same shot. We like, of Sarah. I, 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 yeah, I shot the hell out of her. So this is what you call over coverage. And this is because I wanted this, you know, I wanted you to feel uncomfortable. Bang, bang, bang. See, we're, 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 just, we're just cutting, 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 cutting. There we go, and cut. So, so the reason for that is, is, is up until that scene, if you watch the movie, um, you'll probably notice that the style I employ up until that scene is this master shots sort of just revealing with the odd cutaway. The, and there then, is, yeah, there's a psychological yeah. sort of technique to cuts, which, um, you know, it's, it, you, you see, and I think Hitchcock used to do it, where he'd have, uh, it's in The Birds, there's a great scene in The Birds, where um, they attack the sort of petrol station, where every cut, he said, from the beginning of the scene, from him walking to the coffee shop, got shorter in increments to the point where it was like, yeah. <laughs> and it's just yeah. this, this uh, yeah. Yeah, another, another great example of that is uh, Richard Donner's The Omen, when the, mm. when Damon's on the tricycle going towards, and yeah. if you watch that scene, there's, there's there's like about twenty or thirty cuts in that scene, and it never cuts back to the same shot. It's just bam, 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 it's, and it just gets you on edge, on edge, on edge. And that's so that's an example where you're you're overcovering things for a stylistic reason. You're not you're not overcovering because you don't know what you're doing. You're like, I know when I'm getting to the edit. So poor Sarah had to put up with lying there, and it, and it's a similar thing with that final scene where she's doing did you, that. Did you ever fall asleep when you're just lying there? That happens sometimes. No, I'm a professional. <laughs> that's, that's fine. <laughs> Sorry, I would have fallen asleep, but I'm clearly not professional. But it, it's the same with that with with the, with the scene when she's when she's got the flame to the gas canister. If you notice, it's cutting all around her. It's like face face. And that we literally spent half a day um, basically shooting that, and Sarah had to do that monologue about about twenty times. Yeah, which. And this is and this is where you've got to take two. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Take two is really good. And he knew we had it on take two but as well. It, yeah. but, just didn't need it. <laughs> but I knew because I wanted to cut to all these different angles and constantly do it. And um, uh, and that's where again you have you have to make sure you have people that are gonna gonna deliver on all those takes and they're gonna understand what you're doing as well. When you say to because you don't have time to sit down and go, this is the plan, mm -hmm. blah blah blah. All you're gonna do is going around, right? Uh, I'm just gonna shoot the shit out of you today. But, like that. Yeah, good. Yeah, right. And that's, no, and that's it. No one's kicking us out yet. But uh, okay. we've got visual effects stuff to do. Right, okay. Let's visual effects. So there, okay. There's a clip. Yeah, this is an example of how you uh, just a simple, a simple knowledge of After Effects can get you out of a, a world of trouble. Should you play the clip? Yeah. Cool. Are you going to talk through these? Yeah, I'll talk through no yeah, yeah. So tell me, Bradley, what did you do here? <laughs> Oh, okay. This is uh, th okay. These are the two shots that are a Once, year apart. Yeah. These are a year apart. These two shots: the shots of Sarah and the shots of Frankie. Bam! And then suddenly, bam! There we are. Two shots that are a year apart in one shot. There. Uh, that's an Never effect shot. Known. Yeah. So that that corridor doesn't exist there. So if we go, if we, if we go straight onto the next clip because there's more visual effects. But that's, you know, you have to kind of pre-plan that and know that you're going to do that. So Sarah's like, I'm telling her to react to this, react to that. She's like, oh, I don't know, okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, this is, a, this is Rush's. There's Sarah walking away from the bus stop. That's all right, isn't it? We stood there for ages. Oh, look, there's a bus! What? <laughs> that bus is a visual effects shot. Yes. That was what the hell? That bus didn't exist, and now we're in Watford. And that is not a visual effects line, Mark. <laughs> I thought that was a visual effects line. That's shot. art department. I thought you did a monsters yeah. on it. And uh, Nick, go straight on to the next week. Okay, so we could not have naked flames in this, so that's a torch. Look, you can see the bulb. That's a torch. Uh, what? All of these shots are digital effects with the flames. All the flames are, are comps. In every, pretty, I'd say 90% of the candle shots are comps. Oh, wait, here's Harry. Look, we had one police car. We could only afford one. Oh, but look, what? there's two. There's what? two. What is this voodoo? There's two. That's because it's the same police car. 
Simple. Okay, and here we go. One police car goes by. Uh, and no Did more. And then, oh look, and then a random taxi goes past. Look at that. What? Okay, so here we go. And there's one, two, what three. And then the random taxi goes by, but it looks like a police car now. Look. Hey. <laughs> so. Ah, oh, what? <laughs> <laughs> we can only afford one police car. One police car. So those, those other two police cars are from other takes that I'd come to. I'd leave there. Yeah, you, yeah, I was shuttling through that bit. I was like, what do you but, they, but, but here's the thing. If you have After Effects, those, those, those effects cost nothing. And, just, and to be specific, you did, there were no track points. There were just, you know, the wall is a good enough track point. You can add these. Yeah, the, if you think about Star Wars Special Editions, they were adding visual effects to a film made, you know, 30 odd years ago at the time they did those movies. And yeah, if there's a thing that's staying still and another thing that's staying still, you can track on those effects points. Yeah, so and, and tracking software is, is incredible yeah, now. You can track anything now, and, and, you know, and, and this is like, you know, costs pennies. So you can, if you, if you pre-think, now obviously there's a lot of effects you can't do with no money. You know, if you attempt them, they're gonna look pony. The, the, the trick is, is understanding what you can get away with, what you can't. And if you have that basic understanding, if you go out there, if you've got After Effects and a camera, you can you can up your production value. So now we have time for audience questions. Is that right, Yari? Yeah. Uh, yeah. How long <laughs> we got? How long we got? Uh, about ten minutes. All right. Okay. Any audience questions? Please don't be shy. <laughs> All right. Oh, okay. We are, you're closer there. Two. And then and then you. Hey. Um. I heard that you said you made your own music for the for the backing tracks. Um, if you decided to have uh, music like pop music, uh, up and coming pop music, would you need any licensing for it? Uh, yes, absolutely. Um, I mean, I did the score. There are some songs in this, and which I didn't do. I didn't did you rapped. do the rap at the beginning? <laughs> yeah, that was that was me. Yeah, yeah, and the, and the and the courtesan song in uh, to the montage in the middle. That was me doing my female singing voice. No. Um, Okay, uh, the courtesans did a did uh, basically have loaned us a track for the movie for that that uh, sequence in the middle, that montage, that um, uh, which I felt was really an important moment because I think that you you, you introduce to, to characters and blah 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 and you do that and you, I think you get to know them, but I just wanted this little montage in the middle that kind of just got you to know what's going on outside of the gang world for these characters and only, only subtle, I didn't want it to be too in your face um, and I thought that this song was great and the Court Sands were a band that I've done music videos for and, and and I thought they were perfect so I went up to them and I said hey you know <laughs> make it a horror film do you want to uh, loan, loan, loan me a track so yeah so so they've um, loan, given me that track have to sign the rights away all the rap stuff is done by an artist called Jibber who's, who's actually a friend of my DPs and he, he got him involved and he, he said, uh, yeah, he, here's some tracks, pick some. So yeah, so they're all, they're all licensed as, as, in, as in we have the permission and so that anyone that buys the film knows that you know, we have the rights to those songs. But, um, but they are basically just people that uh, supported the project and, and say, hey look, you know, hey look, if, you, if, you, if, if it's successful enough that there's a soundtrack, then let's see some money. But, if they, you know, but otherwise, Go for it. Well, that's the thing as well. You can get the stuff on iTunes. and Whenever a film comes out, you can get soundtracks on iTunes. And if you're with PRS, uh, they sort of, every time the film is screened on television, if your song is over, I think it's in 30 second increments with PRS. I you can, yeah, you can, you can be clever with it, yeah. You can, yeah, yeah, so I think little things like, uh, didn't JJ yeah. Abrams do the opening, like, dial up internet connection noise for Lost? And yes. so he gets a shit ton of money every time an episode of Lost is on television. So mm. little things like that is kind yeah. of good to do. Yeah. But, in yeah. Terms of, sorry, sorry to go on again. Um, sorry? But in terms of like, contracts and everything, like and admin stuff like that, would it be you yourself that would deal with that? Or do you... As the producer, yeah. I, 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 I produce this movie, so yeah, I deal with all that. On another, on another movie, if I was a director and somebody else was producing, they would handle all that. Um, but uh, but it's, it's, it's something you have to do. Even, you know, even if people are, you know, giving it to you, you've got to get, you've got to have the a written contract, and and you just you just negotiate how that works depending on the project. Did you write it yourself? The contracts. The contracts. Yes. You can um, you can get those. You can like, get as, as yeah. A resource there are there are templates that you can use. Yeah, mm. and that's and that's yeah you, and you do that. And as long as everyone's, I mean, the thing is, is a, is 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 the legal world is a is a is a is a 
is a whole different thing. As long as everyone's in, got, the, got the right spirit and, and you've signed something and it's all very clear, and quite often you can refer to emails as well. So if, anyone, if anyone's like, uh, I will, the con contract doesn't quite say that, it's like, well, you can refer to this email that clearly says that this is what I wanted, you said yes, blah, blah, blah. You know, are, are you a musician? Myself? Yeah. No, I'm an actor. Okay. Because um, I'm going to say that there are different, what you do as a musician, if you've written, written something, you license the right for them to use it in the film. Um, and that's it. So they don't own the song, they don't own the track, we just have permission to use it. Mm. And that's it. And, and if there's other little things there, you can use it in the marketing as well if you choose. So just little things like that, really. It's just like a s small thing to cover the composer or anything else. And because again, we've both done films on low budget. You, you go to the composer and say, you, you haven't, we don't own this, you own this, but you're giving us permission to use it even though you've written it based on the cues and the beats in the film. Does that make sense? Yeah. Um, another question. You've actually answered it. It's oh, related oh. to what? I'm good. So thank you. You have another question, don't you? You stick your hand up. Yeah, go for it. There was a lot of breathing in the film. <laughs> <laughs> was that ever... Actors you... just Wait love to breathe, man. They don't stop. What were you saying? Hey. Oh. Just the front here. Just the front here. Probably hand up. You said there's a lot of breathing in the film. Oh, pass it along, pass it along, pass it along. <laughs> Here we go. There you go. Yeah. Sorry. Uh, but yeah, there was a lot of breathing. Um, was was that like accentuated in any way, or was? <laughs> Hell yeah. Did you require oxygen at the end of it, or something? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> really, I mean, the sound. Okay, the sound is. I don't know. Is, is David here? Because he said he was. He said he said he was might have turned up, but he's not. Anyway, David's my sound designer, and he's kind of my my partner in crime when it comes to how the sound, how the film sounds. And um, he um, so. Yeah, basically the idea is, is is there's a lot of scenes that you edit and you have to tell people, sometimes you have to tell them, hey, there's going to be a bit of music in here, so it'd be great. Um, or you're going to tell them, oh, the sound's going to do this. Or you're going to say, it's just going to be breathing. And as a, as a director, when you're showing people the rough cut, you find yourself going, <laughs> like that, just to let people know. Like when Sarah's running down a corridor, you know, the, basically the only, th I mean, there's, there's Atmos, but the main sound is her breath going, <laughs> Like that, and it and it is it is a major part of the of the scene to make the scene work. Um, so for what happens then is a few months later, Sarah comes yeah. into a studio. My ADR sessions were very strange. How many words? How many words? Singing. How many words did you say I in your think ADR? I said about two sentences, and the rest were just different types of breathing. Yeah. And it was like more in the nose. Okay. Now, now make it from the mouth. Okay. Brad <laughs> licking his teeth, was watching. It was so <laughs> I was like in the ADR for two hours. What did you just say? I said he was just licking his teeth watching. Yeah, breathe more. <laughs> Sorry, it's a trick all of the directors do it. Yeah, I have, I have that file. So yeah, ADR um, was yeah. very interesting. But, you, but, I think, but I think most actors will say, yeah, I, I spent a lot of time in the ADR for you. It's going, ah, ah, mm, mm, ah, mm, mm, mm. <laughs> Roger Moore being an amazing example of ADR when it comes to, when it comes to fight scenes. Karate chop. Yeah, karate chop. But yeah, it's it's uh, it's that's this is one of the things as an actor you have to do, um, and you do find yourself literally in a studio with a director directing you how to breathe, and you're you're because because you don't it's it's an interesting thing that you point that out though because it's if you took that out it it, it would be nonsense it w it really wouldn't work it is this is and this is where you know when when you get to um, Foley and things like that. So many little sounds that you know. There's, a, there's someone spends a whole day at a microphone doing this, like that. <laughs> and if you don't have that sound, it won't work. It's very flat, isn't it? It's very yeah. dead. It's yeah. like you're telling a story with like yeah. small sound effects. Absolutely. Yeah. It's weird though. You do start becoming like in ADR. I started to really like analyze the different types of breathing. So they play obviously a little sh uh, little scene and be like, this is what we need the breath over, and I'll be like. Okay, you know. Okay, I'm definitely doing that one a bit more. Like that's heavier. No, that's lighter. And I, you start to really like work out what type of breath am I going to give for this bit. It's, it's, it's good as well. That's the, that's the thing about like good actors is that you saw they 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 clock posture and they, you know the sound. If you're sitting in a line and you're getting up, you, you, you know your lungs compressed and everything changes. Yeah, you have to. Why a lot, like, a lot so of actors. So if you're doing ADR, you got to think about this stuff. Yeah, and a lot of actors, yeah. the this best is why a lot of do. actors. And I think and, and Matt and, and Ethan did this as well. I think you know when you you stand there on a microphone, you you. You're like, okay, I've got to move about. I've got to, I've got to do something. I've got to, I've got to do this. If I'm, yeah, if I'm going to be getting up, I'm going to sit down and I'm going to get up. And because it's, it's amazing how those little sounds, if they don't sound mm. right, 
it, it completely, it yeah, it, you don't say it. You don't notice it, but if it's not there or it's not right, you do notice it. And that's, that's one of the crazy things. Yeah, so it's like, you know, give me a minute. You think, oh, okay, that's a good sentence. That's give me a minute. But you're not saying give me a minute, you're saying give, give me a minute. minute. And that is just a noise. Yeah. And you have to replicate that noise, mm. the way your lips move, the way you, you hunched over, all those things sort of play a part. Um, we've got time for one more question. Right there, sir. I'm still not quite sure what tone you wanted to achieve with this movie. Was it supposed to be serious horror or more comedy? Did you find it funny? That's your job. <laughs> <laughs> so the audience is all about it. Um, did, you, did you find it funny? Yes. Yeah, you did. You found it funny. I was, yeah, I was thinking, was that intentionally or... When you make every time, yeah. yes. Yeah. Every, every time, time, every time you laughed, I intended it. <laughs> no. Okay. No, it's an interesting question. Okay. Here's the thing. Here we are. Okay. The the the, the case in point is Frankie, who's here. Frankie's death scene, um, which is which which every when we were shooting it, and everyone everyone was when we were shooting it because it's a, such a beautiful shot, atmospheric shot backlit and everyone's going oh my god this shot's amazing and it's, it looks beautiful and everyone's like oh that's my favorite shot in the film so far Brad it's great and uh, it's so atmospheric and I'm going yeah but you know everyone's going to laugh in this you know when Frankie gets hit they're going to laugh and I'm like no no it's horrible I'm going yeah it is horrible but they're going to laugh because that is the that is what you do I, I've done it myself so many times and horror and comedy are so closely linked so is it a serious film? Yeah. Does it have a serious point? I hope so. Do, are people going to walk away from it thinking, oh, okay, that actually that was that, that had more to it than I thought it was going to have? Yes. Do I want you to laugh when Frankie gets whacked in the face? Yes. Do I want? Do I? Because it's a release and the, and horror. There's so many so many horror films that affected me deeply, but I will still laugh. So the tone of horror and comedy is uh, is such a thin line. So if I hear people like. You know, if I hear them laugh at something like that, or I hear them laugh at, at a tense moment, um, um, that's great. That's that's what I need. You need a reaction because 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 laughing is is a release of of tension. Um, and um, so, where it goes on the line there is is a personal thing. Um, there's so many there's so many horror movies that I find not funny that other people do. Um, and so many horror movies that I find hilarious, and other people are like, "What? <laughs> Sick!" Um, and that's because it's, it's, a like, it's like going to the Prince Charles with millennials; they laugh at the wrong things. <laughs> <laughs> no offense. <laughs> but, this is true. But there's there's that thing though. It's like it's like Jurassic Park. You there's that bit where the car comes down to the tree and it lands on them, and they're alive. And goes, "No, we're back in the car again." It's not that funny, but the tension that we've all had. It's juxtaposed yeah. the tension and like the, the permission to have that release. Yeah. That's but, the yeah. thing. Which is why I think a lot of bad horror films rely on jump scares. Because every time there's a jump scare, all the audience does is laugh. Mm. Uh, whenever you go to jump scare in a shit horror film, they're like they're still trying to scare you. It's like, no, you're done, mate. you're done, you're done your job, it's over. So it's it's it's, it's always the, that thing. I think tone, I think consistent tone is a bit it's boring. Frankly pathetic. It's yeah, it's it's, it's it's an insecurity yeah. in, in in telling your story. Yeah, and play I with think it. Play you with have it. a tone that goes like that. I think you're in something. Yeah, really take to take it to the edge and play with it. And some people are going to find it that side of the tone. <laughs> some are going to find it that side of the tone. What was that amazing thing that Tarantino said? So when you watch Jaws, you're laughing a lot because it's a really witty, clever, funny it's film. It's one of the funniest films ever made. You're yeah. not laughing. No. He said the same thing with Reservoir Dogs. He said yeah. you, know, you laugh through most of Reservoir Dogs, but when you're not laughing, you're definitely not laughing. Mm -hmm. That's why no one calls those films comedies. No, that's so. why Jaws is one of the, is, is is I think one of the most sublime examples of filmmaking. Mm. It is it yeah, it's funny when it's funny, and it's not funny when it's not funny, and it 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 doesn't you know exactly mm. you, you know, and it's it, oh, it I mean, and I don't even pretend to come to that <laughs> level of filmmaking. I can just all I can do is do something that I find interesting intriguing and entertaining and throw it out and you either <laughs> find it big, big find cross. it sick or you find it funny or you find it you know but as long as it's getting a reaction great mm. do we have one more yare or are we done so much fun <laughs> so ladies and gentlemen um uh have, have we had a have we had a good time yeah. Yeah. Yes. 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 Yes.
mostly satisfied. Yeah. Yeah. Very satisfied with the Did we learn anything? Yes. Oh, I don't think so. Boo! There's some really sim sympathetic yeses there. Ah, okay. uh, probably. <laughs> Uh, so, uh, just before we go, uh, a round of applause for Brad. Okay, uh, so uh, the date's not quite done yet. If you'd like to join us, feel free. Um, we'll be in the blue room uh, having a drink, so you can uh, do that.